Issue 228 We start out still in the confusingness, where Sonic conveniently already knows Tails, and the kid immediately becomes great friends with Rotor, as the two have never met in this bizarre universe. So, Sonic knows Tails right away, but not all the other Freedom Fighters? We are three issues into this, and I still don't know what the fuck is going on. Where are we? What's going on? What's happening? Why is this happening? With Tails meeting Rotor for the first time, this feels more like a fanfiction about the games Sonic and Tails meeting the Freedom Fighters somehow, than an actual canon story in the comic. Like, when I first saw this image of Tails first meeting Sally, I thought it was from the reboot. Sonic says that he saw Sally working on a computer before they left Scrap Brain Zone. There was a computer? Sally explains that Eggman's production plants are still running, and he did survive. The worst earthquake yet happens, and Sonic says that the entire planet splitting apart would suck because that's where he keeps his stuff. That's something I'd expect Scourge to say to justification from saving a planet. It's an intriguingly selfish and shallow reason for being a hero, and Sally doesn't even whine about it. Sally says that they need to dismantle Eggman's infrastructure first to cut off his support lines before bothering to beat him again. Naturally, since Sonic's not even going to bother to beat Eggman up. He just he just plans on smashing a giant robot of his and letting him go. They're better off just destroying infrastructure. They all go in the direction of a factory, and we see classic Eggman in a death egg as well, coincidentally. I never liked classic Eggman's design, by the way. He's way too simple. I, he's not believable at all. Is this an alternate dimension or not? Who is he? Snively asks Eggman what was Phase 1, even though he was there the whole time. And Eggman says that Phase 1 was that he did that thing to the planet. Way to clear things up. And I checked the timeline and the reboot hasn't happened yet. He tells Snively that it primed Mobius for Phase 2, and it severely drained the power reserves. Snively says that they don't have to worry about that because the 7 Chaos Emeralds they found, conveniently, are recharging the station fast. Eggman brags that now he can roboticize all Mobius in one shot, a plan that Robotnik already tried to do in the early issues of the comic. So this isn't exactly original, just high stakes. Snively is confused to Eggman saying that Sonic's the unpredictable variant as if he's the same Eggman we know, even though he didn't remember what the Death Egg was last issue. And Snively asks if they should be paying attention to the earthquake causing dimensional disturbances. He says that the readings are suggesting a total space-time collapse, and it's like reality has been stretched and is fighting to snap back. Again, this came completely out of fucking nowhere. The last thing we saw was Sally walk into a death trap in the Death Egg. Why does Eggman have to remember everything? Can this distraction end already? This feels so... Dark Age-esque. And how could Eggman possibly affect all of space-time at once? I could understand him affecting his own universe and that's it. Or maybe stretching it and it affects the surrounding universes as well. But all of space-time? Do you know how big space-time continuum is? The heroes find Chemical Plant Zone, skipping past Emerald Hill, unless that's where they were earlier, and Tails asks what Eggman would have to gain from all that pollution. Rotor wonders if he's stockpiling the pollution, and Tails wonders if it's meant for a machine. It feels like a Sonic fan's fandom over Sonic 2 rather than the actual plot explanation, since the characters just wonder about this without ever being confirmed as right. As Sonic goes through a tube and Tails flies up to him to explain how he catches up with you in Sonic 2, it's revealed that all the Freedom Fighters were on elevators skipping the entire level, which Sonic and Tails wouldn't have found fun. That's charming. Sally walks into a metal room with a bunch of yellow blocks, and Sonic calls the blocks crates after Sally says that this is a supply delivery route. I love this! I love that they actually try to explain what the rising water block section is in the universe. Antoine says moi instead of I or even je because, uh, we need him to mess up English, even though it makes no sense. And the earthquake that happens is what causes the rising Megamac to show up here. And somehow Tails conveniently already knows what the Megamuck is called, 
and what it's all about when he doesn't have to know. Also, it's called Mac, not Muck, I, I think. Sonic jumps around and spin dashes through a wall to create a door, and when they all escape the trap, Pasali says that they have to cut the support lines to Eggman or it won't matter that they beat him. Sonic gets a flashback to Sally saying that if they rush in, someone's gonna get hurt, as he sees a vision of Sally getting incinerated. How? How? How did he get this vision? This causes Sonic to, rather than listening to Sally since the flashback clearly proves she was right, he decides to ditch the Freedom Fighters, with Tails conveniently coming along with him. Maybe he's just scared of witnessing that happen to Sally again and wants to spare himself the emotional pain, but that's so self-centered, I expect the hero to want to stick with her to try to prevent her from getting destroyed, not give up. This is interesting, but how are these guys going to survive without magical power beings like Sonic and Tails protecting them? We cut to Oil Ocean Zone, because screw the rest of the levels. And Sally says that if they shut this oil refinery down, Eggman will lose over half of his energy resources. Rotary lampshades that they should have Sonic around, and Earthquake sends some foul-smelling gas that doesn't kill them for some reason. It reminds me of Sonic Mania's Oil Ocean Zone. So that concept isn't even creative. The comic thought it up years in advance. We see all three of them get spotted by a seahorse badnik as they're standing on a pipe above some oil, and on the way to Metropolis Zone, Tails says in the tornado that's suddenly red and not gray now, that it'd be nice if they had some backup here. Sonic is confident that they'll be fine for some bizarre reason, or maybe he's lying to reassure him. And he dives out of the plane into Metropolis Zone, presumably to land on the metal floor and get horribly injured from the impact and die a slow painful death. No, of course not. I'm sure he'll be fine because bullshit. This issue is by Ian Flynn. Can this arc be over yet? This has nothing to do with anything. There's still references to characters kind of remembering the real world, with Eggman seeming to know it all, while Sonic gets a flashback for no reason to what happened to Sally in the Death Egg, and they still haven't explained it. This isn't keeping me on the edge of my seat. This isn't exciting. This is frustrating. Anyways, it has Sonic ditch the Freedom Fighters in Chemical Plant Zone, because when Sally said they should cut off the infrastructure of Eggman before rushing ahead, Sonic has a flashback to Sally dying from rushing ahead, and instead of being dedicated to protecting her after that, or even questioning that vision at all, he just does the exact opposite and ditches them to almost guarantee their dooms. Huh? That's something Fleetway Sonic. N no, maybe he, not even him. It, it makes sense if he had a thought bubble explaining that he's sparing himself the emotional pain of seeing her die, but wouldn't Sonic become protective of them to prevent that instead? Instead, they're left to go to Oil Ocean Zone alone. 